Hello, everyone, and welcome to Conversations with Friends. I'm Meredith, and uh, I'm looking forward to this interview with uh, somebody that she might not be a household name in all of South Florida, but in the theater world, she is becoming more and more known and respected and loved. Her name is Carrie Brianna Hart, and see, you might already know of her. And I recently had the wonderful uh, opportunity to meet her and, and be interviewed by her. And she is an actor. She's a playwright. She's a theater director. She's, uh, she's one who actually handles all the technical things that when necessary, a technical director, and the list goes on and on. Let me think of some other things that she does. Playwright, I said, stage manager, radio host, and Carrie is uh, a multi-talented person. And I'm, and just, just a delight, and you're going to see that, that she is right now. And so, Carrie, welcome. Welcome to Conversations with Friends. And, Carrie, how we met was I went to an amazing play a few months ago. It wasn't uh, that long ago at the Gable stage. And uh, at the end of the night, they kept talking about you, technical director, doing this, doing that, doing that. You were directing this one-man show which was amazing, a famous uh, August Wilson story of his life. And uh, you were the one, you were the force behind the play. So I first want you to just uh, tell me about what that was like to be directing such a play. And it's gotten a lot of publicity in South Florida. And well, thank and you. beyond, and beyond, right? This was a big, this is a big step for you, right? Yes, yes, definitely. Thank you so much, Meredith, for having me here today and talking with me and finding me interesting enough to talk with. <laughs> oh, come on. I, anybody would find you interesting enough. Let's <laughs> face it. Yeah. Thank you. The, in, the experience okay. of directing at Gable Stage, that one man show by August mm. Wilson, how I learned what I learned was an incredible experience. I got to curate the entire production, uh, what everyone saw, what everyone heard, um, to create the mood, to tell the story, working with the, the actor that I got to work with, he was absolutely sensational and gave me all of his energy and committed to the role in such a, a wonderful way that we had such a great production, working with the projectionist, working with the set designer, working with uh, the lighting designer and the mm -hmm. producer and the whole team at Gable Stage. It was really magnificent. When I started the production, I started with the set, uh, working with Frank Oliva and talking to him about my theory of a string theory and how we are all little strings. Um, some of us made up of multiple strings and how those mm -hmm. strings vibrate and cause cause an eruption, they cause a vibration in the universe. And that mm. I want to set somehow to be something that the actor could interact with and that we could um, show the, show that divine inspiration that happens um, and how that vibration raises through um, our interactions and our experiences. And so we started with the set and, and he gave me an absolutely amazing playground for the performer to, to live in. And it, it just escalated from there. The projectionist with getting um, the spark of inspiration and showing the firing up of you know the inside when you get charged up and excited about something and we kept working it and working it and working what that image would look like what it would feel like what it would do was it static was it kinetic and oh it was just amazing just uh, Joel Zusk who did that um, he's out of Chicago it, just an amazing experience and then blending the whole experience together was Ernesto uh, who was our lighting designer, and he just made everything just seamlessly come together. Because um, there, you know, with the production, there's a lot of chaos. Sometimes we're doing things, we're trying things. We don't know what's going to work. I didn't know what was going to work. I just had these out there ideas, and I knew what I wanted to portray. But I, I you know, how how do we make this happen? And how do we make the audience see it? How do we make them feel it? How do we make them, you know, live in this world? And 
just so many things came together to make it possible and make it happen. And I was so excited and pleased with the end result. It sounds to me like you were talking about, I mean, what you just said was like bringing everybody together in harmony, rather than often when we're working on projects, whatever it is, I worked in television, everybody sometimes feels separate, separated from each other. And you're trying to get into yourself and figure out what you need to do. But when you feel that you're not alone, that you're part of something much bigger, and you were all part of such a big project, you know, to do this uh, one man show at Gable Stage. I mean, that that's quite an accomplishment that you, you know, that you were able to uh, be chosen, that you were chosen for this, but you did something that would you say is not necessarily done? I mean, maybe somewhere, but done in theater or in the arts where you just, we make everybody feel like we're part of something bigger than just our own role, our own job or whatever. Well, I think the goal of any production is to have everyone come together and coalesce. I don't think that the the project should be separated. Um, and and the, it is the job of the director to make sure that everything comes together and blends and mm. works. Sometimes you do have disjointed parts and people do their own thing and you have to, oh, this is what I've got. Let me work with it. <laughs> you know, oh, what do I do with this? Okay, let's see mm. how it can fit. But um, the team of artists that were there, um, Tech Week, we just really put our heels in and we were there late uh, working and just getting it done and making sure that everything blended because it had to, it, it had, it had to, there was no way that this show was going to happen and everything not meld together because my whole theory is everything is in, 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 in uniform with the universe, everything is supposed to be working together in synchronicity. And so um, I, I just, I, it had to happen. There's no way that it wasn't going to happen. It was difficult, there were challenges, but um, those challenges just made me dig in deeper and remember what my focus was, remember what my purpose was, remember mm -hmm. what did you start this with? Okay, I started with this intention. Okay, let's go right mm -hmm. back to that intention. How can we make this work here? I have a problem here. I have an obstacle. How can I make my intention work with this obstacle? And everything just, it, it was just incredible. It was an incredible experience. I was so super pleased with the result. I wish the play could have gone on longer. I'd love to remount the production. I'd love to tour it. <laughs> you know, I'd love to. to you don't know what's going to happen next, do you? I, I mean, it. isn't that the, uh, the theater world or the arts world where you just, you get into something, it becomes your life, right? I guess for a few months. Yeah, and that's exactly. all there is for you for a certain amount of time. But then it leads to something else. And I was looking at your bio of all the plays that you've done and written and acted in and technically directed. And I mean, you, you've really made a lot of progress, you know, in your career. Well, I'm so, a theater rat. <laughs> you are. I read that you rat. fell in love with theater. You knew you were going to be an actor at the age of the old age of three. Yes. Three years old, right? You yes, said, I, I want to be an actor. Yeah. Mommy or so daddy or really? I was a flower in a play yeah. um, in preschool uh, at Michael's Kindergarten in Opalaka, Florida. And I was a flower in this little play that we were doing. And I did my song, I did my dance, and everybody applauded. And I was just there on the little, you know, on the little cafeteria stage there at the preschool. And my mind was blown. I was just like, what? People like what I did? Wow, I can't wait to do this again. And so I then started memorizing everything on television when um, guests would come over to uh, my parents' house, my mother would say, go ahead and do that thing you did. And I would perform for them. I would sing, I would dance, I would recite poems. I would make up poems on the spot. I actually started writing writing poetry at nine years old, but I, I was a performer. I loved, I loved communication. I loved being able to make someone feel something, to take them on a journey, to take them with me on my story. 
So I, I fell in love with it really early. Yeah. I can feel your passion, you know, and that it started at such an early age. But uh, I mean, there are a lot of parents that say to their children, that's great. That's wonderful. But go get a real job. Right. Not that yeah. it's not a real job, but that's what parents say. Get something that's a little more secure that, you know, you're going to get a, you know, a paycheck or you might have your own business. Did your parents say that at all to you or they just didn't? Well, my parents, um, my father played the piano when he was younger mm. and he also wrote poetry um, through mm. he still wrote poetry in his solitary moments at the age of 80. Um, mm. My mother used to sing opera before she got caught up into the civil rights movement in the 60s. Your mom? Are you talking about your mom? Mother, Did you see? Oh, my see. mother caught up in the civil rights movement, but she sang opera. So I had these things inside me. And mm -hmm. when I wanted to become an artist, they actually encouraged me. Um, when I was in college, I think it was, I came home and I said, oh my goodness, I'm looking at our family tree and I'm looking like, oh, I'm the one, I'm the one in the generation that everybody's gonna be worried about. Like, how is she gonna eat? How is she going to live? You know, what is she going to do for work? And my mom said, don't worry about that. Don't worry about that. Do what you love. Don't worry about that. I'm touched to hear that. I really yeah. am because I think many parents thwart, you know, the real progress that their children could make, you know, by kind of pushing them or being real nervous about their future and just looking at your face, you know, seeing your, your joy, you know, and your love for what you, for what you do. And, um, but you, you know, I, I would say you definitely knew you had a talent. Not everybody uh, knows it at such an early age, do they? And that not, they're not as driven as you are. And, you know, it can be a, a, an insecure business, you know, work. Okay. Um, yes, you love it. You want to do it, but if things don't work out or you don't get that part, you know, I mean, I always remember chorus line, how difficult it is to be an actor. It, I mean, from actors that I've known and, or writers that I've known, yes, it is a passion, but it can also be very lonely at times too, right? Yes, it can be. And mm -hmm. because I wasn't um, able to get parts that I wanted to get sometimes, that made me look for another way that I could participate. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't allow that, um, that I didn't get the lead role or the lead dancer role, the lead singer role or the lead actress in the, part, in the play. I didn't let mm -hmm. that discourage me from being part of the production. I, I found another way to participate. Well, can I do the lights? Can I do the sound? Can I help paint the set? Um, who, needs, who needs to know when to go? Um, you know, I will come and tell them, hey, you need to be at places right now, okay, and go. You know, I, I get excited about being part of the production because theater is a team sport to me. It's my sport, I train for it. Like football players, basketball players, tennis players, track stars, hockey players, the way that they train for their craft, I train for theater. I train to be ready. I train to be receptive. I train to see what is it that's needed here? What do my actors need? You know, if I'm not in the production, if I'm stage managing, what do my actors need? How can I make this easier for them? How can I ease this process for them so that they can learn their lines, so that they can memorize their blocking, so that they can have that costume right there exactly where they need that costume to be, that prop be exactly where it needs to be when they sweep their hand across, that it's right there for them to grab and continue their energy so they can give a great performance. I love being part of all of that. I, it excites me. I really love it. And you are such a team player. I mean, that's, you know, what I'm seeing in you is such a team player. It's not all about, I want to be the star and I'll only be happy if I'm the star. And I mean, that's just a beautiful way to live, isn't it? So you, you're you living in a in a sense of just pleasure of your, because you have found what you want to do. Okay. Um, what do you say, again, to, you know, young actors starting out, who, you know, are, again, so insecure and afraid, you know, in terms of the society and the economy. And um, you said earlier, you just say, just if that's what you want to do, just go for it and forget what anybody says or, or says about you. Is yes. that what it is, is you have to really be strong within. Yeah, that yeah. seems to be for a reason. You mm -hmm. want to do it for a reason. It's not there randomly. <laughs> it's not a random yeah. thing. 
Um, yeah. That spark has been put inside of you for a reason. And it's up to you to feed that spark. You've got to give that spark some air. And what I say to young performers, so that spark can get air and become a big fire and, and really burn and you can show the passion that you have is perform as often as you possibly can. Mm -hmm. Perform mm. for whoever you can. Perform at civic functions, at social functions, where people say that they need speakers. Go and practice with your friends. Um, it, recite poetry. Sing wherever it is, wherever you can find your audience. Hold them hostage <laughs> and perform for them. And then get feedback because that's how you find out what's working. What is not Ooh. working? What can I improve upon? When I did this and made my voice tremor in this way, ooh, it really got to the people. When I did it over here, oh no, they didn't like that. It bothered them. What can I do? How can I practice this some more? Let's try it a different way. Practice, 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 perform as often as you can. Refine yourself, refine your craft and look for windows because you never know where that window will be. You never know. You never know when that door is going to open. And actually everything you're saying to me is you don't have to be in theater to embrace this philosophy. Okay. Whatever you're doing, whatever career, if you do it with passion and you are uh, excited about your work and you just keep going and going and you don't care whether it's the little, you know, the little opportunity or the big opportunity. And I mean, that's, that's a great way to live, isn't it? Because I, I'm getting the feeling that you're, you're basically most of the time, I mean, we're never, maybe all the time, but uh, very, very content in your life. Carrie, I know that you're a meditator and I want to talk a little bit about what it is you do, what your practice is and how it informs your life. Well, I, meditation was introduced to me when I was 11 years old. I had a really wacky drama teacher <laughs> um, told us, sit like this, uh, breathe like this, and clear your mind, which saying that to an 11 year old is very, 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 you're not going to get that. Yeah. <laughs> you're not going to yeah. do that. But it was something that I really took to and I practiced it at home and it has become part of my life. Meditation helps me feel unified with myself. It helps me feel unified with the universe. When I feel alone, it reminds me that I am not alone. Even though I am meditating and I am practicing and I am sitting by myself, it helps me feel very, very connected. When I'm having a, 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 a difficult day, um, or going through difficult circumstances, meditation reminds me to be one with myself, to be one with everything around me, to practice harmony, and it just makes everything better. Meditation does have the power to do that, can really do that, yeah. And you know, you, you said it's not, it, I don't have to be the star, but we are all stars. Right. We all the star each of us is the star and we have to remember that we are the star and so our experience counts the quality mm. of your experience counts you want to have a good experience you want to be receptive to the things that are coming to you so shine 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 wherever it is whatever your platform is if you're an accountant you are the star accountant, <laughs> you know? You're if you, important if you're an accountant, you know? Exactly. If you're, I, you know, I think I've shared this story before, maybe once before, um, where I was uh, working, when I worked at WLRN, uh, I was assigned to go to the into the schools and do stories on uh, people that were making a difference, you know? And um, they had, were getting an award or something. And I remember... One of them was uh, cap the head of the cafeteria. And I thought, well, what, you know, like, what is it that she's going to talk about? Um, you know, the food that they prepare or what? Like, is that going to be that interesting to the audience? And I have to tell you, that's one of the stories of my life. The love that children had for her when she walked through the cafeteria, little children coming over and hugging her and the effect that she had. And she said she lived for the children. And I thought this woman is making a difference in the world. 
you know? And every day she said she got up and she was excited that she would be here with the children. And uh, they were like all her children, as far as she was concerned. And so that kind of was one of those moments, those meaningful moments for me where I realized whatever you're doing, if you can have, as you're saying, that feeling that I'm doing something special. I did want to focus on something though that kind of relates to all of this is that, you know, I'm involved with the Peace Studio where we work with artists and journalists, um, media people, to young ones especially, to realize how they can make a difference in the world. And they are, you know, that there is something that they can do in the world. But again, it's, uh, they have to really, uh, and they spend a few days with, we bring in like the actors. I think Nestor Torres was part of it. Um, I mean, a lot of local people that were involved with it. And what they have found is, is that one of the parts that are missing in a lot of the lives of these uh, young children, young, they're not children. These are, you know, they're older than that, uh, is, uh, you know, insecurity and a lack of uh, a feeling of well-being, not feeling uh, good physically well because they're emotionally off. And it's what they say is that they feel artists and they were all kinds of artists, you know, they feel like they're alone, that when they're in school, they're the only one that's maybe the actor or the artist or the, you know, and that they, when they came together as a group, they felt like they found family. They just felt like they aren't alone, you know, in the world. And uh, because they don't, they, they speak a different language artists. You know, the things that they talk about, the things that they're interested in. I was wondering if you've seen any of that or experienced any of that. I don't feel that you have just because you're so enthusiastic about everything. But do you feel that can be a problem for um, young musicians and artists and, you know? Definitely, definitely. There, There is a feeling of um, sometimes creating art in a vacuum mm-hmm. that you are self when you're creating it. Um, but finding your tribe and finding like-minded people is really, really invaluable. And there is where you find your strength. Um, mm-hmm. I, I find that there's a lot of strength in individuality. The more individual, the more of an individual that you are, the more specific you are with your own craft and just with being your own person. I think that it makes, I think it makes God and the universe happy to see mm-hmm. us as true individuals, not trying to be like other people. When we sparkle with our own sparkle, the own spark, the, the only sparkle that we have, that only we can reflect, yeah. it, it makes harmony in the world. Um, when I went to college, I uh, went and I was the only person from <laughs> Miami who went to the cold in, in Chicago. I looked at it as an adventure. Um, I made friends the very first day. I I was standing in line for my identification. I turned to the person in front of me. I said, hi, I'm Carrie. What's your name? Nice to meet you. I'm from Miami. And then I turned around to the, to the person in back of me. I said, hi, I'm Carrie. What's your name? I'm from Miami. And the three of us became friends. In fact, those two became engaged um, after we graduated from, after the four years of school. But um, I I look forward to the challenge of, um, of bringing people together. I, I do think that I am a, a joiner of people. Um, I'm a link uh, uh, yeah. to bring people together. And I don't shirk from, from that. And in that, I love that I'm able to bring people with different talents together, people who may not know each other. I can introduce them to each other and maybe they have a spark where they can work together. If I have worked with someone or I have not worked with someone or there's someone that has an interesting talent and this person also has an interesting talent, it's a joy for me to say, hey, so-and-so, do you know so-and-so? Well, okay, well, you do this and she does that and he does that and <laughs> what, what's what, what happens here, you know, because something can happen. There's a reason why we're meeting. I believe that, Carrie, you are a connector. You are one who just connects everybody that you see and everybody. And I love that. Just say, hello, I'm Carrie. I'm, you know, and people, a lot of people are very insecure and they're, you know, fearful. And you just make people feel comfortable and make, make people feel 
good about themselves. So I, you know, I can see how, what you do in theater, you know, how you can, how you can do that. And I want to move into another part that I think is really important with, you know, theater, because I've always loved theater. I grew up, my parents taking me to shows, my parents were involved in theater, not actors, or but they really wanted to support theater in, in our community and everything. And uh, my mother was an artist, so I kind of grew up in a world like that. And But I didn't think that I had any talent. I tried acting and I knew that I it wasn't for me. Not that it wasn't for me, I, I probably wasn't for it. But, you know, <laughs> luckily that I uh, found the media of public television and, uh, you know, that changed my life and changed changed my world. But what I, I want to talk about is this. People might not know, unless they're really um, regular theater goers, the impact uh, or the, the, the impact that theater can have on social change. Because oh many God. of the plays that I've seen at Gable Stage, at many of the theaters, we have some great theaters in South Florida. Am Ensemble. I mean, there's so many. Uh, on the Beach, uh, the theater. Um, My New Drama. My Yes, 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 is, is doing, Miami New Drama is doing fantastic theater. I mean, there's a lot of theater in South Florida. And every time I go to plays at these different places, um, venues, I, I find that I've learned something. And I've uh, realized something about maybe the way people are treated in society or something that changes the way I think. And I, it, I change for the better. Yeah. So I just wanted to get your feeling about... Um, in a way, doesn't most theater do that or a lot of theater do that? It's Yes, that's what art does. You know, that's what yeah. music does. That's what dance does. Visual art, theatrical mm -hmm. art. That's what it does. It brings people together for a common experience. We all are looking at the same thing, experiencing the same thing, but we filter it differently. We filter it differently because of our experiences. And so they give us a perspective. Mm -hmm. um, perhaps this perspective that we've never ever possibly entertained before. It can open up a whole new world. You can educate yourself about an entire experience just by going and experiencing some art. It will open up your mind, it will open up your heart. And then sitting there taking it in with a whole bunch of other strangers, <laughs> you know, and hearing their oohs and their ahs and what makes them uh, re resonates with them mm. and moves them. It, it's just an incredible experience. That's what art does. And I, I, I just, that's what I love about art. And that's what I love about the theater that you can come and you're invited in to an entire world. And so you have an experience that you, you have taken in when you, when you see a good play, you feel like you really are there seeing, living, smelling, doing all the things that that main character is doing. And that's just a very powerful thing. Yeah, it is very powerful. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I mean, I really felt like every play, most every play, not all plays, but that I have seen do that to me. They touch me in a way that it makes me feel something. And I walk out and I just feel like this was an experience. And it's a group experience too. You're all together in the theater. Um, I, yeah, I don't want to put down movies or anything, but it's a different experience. It really it is. is. You feel connected to everyone. Experience. It's completely different because it, it's live. You mm. cannot beat being there live yeah. because the performers also know that you are there live. They feel you. They, they calibrate their performance based on the energy that you give. Yes, the performance is the same, um, because it's scripted and the blocking is scripted. Everything is there. We've practiced and practiced and practiced. It's going to be practice makes perfect. However, when the audience gets there and the energy that they add, it it really makes the roller coaster. It, it takes a different life. Um, some of the turns are more dramatic. Some of them become more tender. Some of them become more harsh. The thing an audience really helps with is some of them become more funny and hysterical, more absurd, you know, as the audience yeah. experiences them. And, and that's, that's just the gift that we have as performers that we're able to, to make that happen. 
you know, and as a theater maker, I love making that happen. I love <laughs> You are in the right business for yourself, aren't you? Um, you have found, or I don't know if you found it. I feel like it found you. It's, you know, the universe, uh, the higher, uh, you know, energy in the world that knew that you were born to be an actor and a connector, you know, someone that really brings everybody together, which to me, in a sense, that is what the arts do. You know, the arts can bring the community together and make people, it's not just to go and entertainment's great and you are entertained, mm -hmm. but it's to connect people and make people feel like they're part of something. And uh, um, yeah, I was just wondering, what's your, what's your hope for the next, you know, project you'd like to do or type of project or, or you just wait and let it happen to you? I think you have an idea, right? Um, well, you know, I, I don't really have an idea. I do have some projects that I'm working mm -hmm. on now. I'm stage managing. I am getting ready to perform some Shakespeare. I just did a little bit of Shakespeare last month. Um, I, I love words, so I do love Shakespeare. Um, mm -hmm. But I, I would like to create a piece, um, an interdisciplinary piece, using music and poetry and dance mm. and include live visual art. I mm. have this idea, um, but it has not completely, the, the, the entire vehicle, the entire vision of it has not come together of how it will happen. But I do believe that it will happen because it's something that I've been thinking about for a while. I know that the artists are, are here to do it. I know that there's talent out there to do mm -hmm. it. I just have to find the proper way to make it happen, to, to curate it. I don't thing. think you have to worry about it. You just have to put it out to the universe and let it happen. And I want people to see what's happened with you in the past. Uh, let's take a look at some of the, uh, of the plays that you've uh, done. So, so this was that absolutely fantastic set that I was mm. speaking about that mm. Frank designed for how I learned what I learned and uh, in, in that shows the whole um what we developed as the cityscape for the hill district where August Wilson um was born and raised where he lived and where he Philadelphia lived. right was it Philadelphia? Yes, 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 yeah. Philadelphia. yeah 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 Philadelphia this um is the um top dog underdog which was by Susan Laurie Parks um, mm -hmm. She won a Pulitzer Prize for this play, and it's a, a tale of two brothers, Lincoln and Booth, and mm -hmm. very contentious relationship. As you see, one is an artist, the other one just wants to get some sleep, and um, <laughs> the tension that you hear uh, where they're at odds um, goes through the entire play um, to, um, to a, a very, very climactic end of the play where everybody exhales because you know, how long could, could this possibly continue on um, the tension between the two of them? Oh, this is a wonderful project that I directed at Vizcaya for Illuminarts um, in March, oh. 2023. Um, I got to work with opera singers. Um, I had never worked with singers. And when I first went into the project, um, I thought that the rehearsals were like, either in the morning or in the evening. And then they were like, no, these rehearsals are all day. <laughs> That's the dinner break. And I was like, oh, wow. What am I going to do with these singers all day long? And then I said, oh, okay. Well, let me just, you know, think here. You know, this is a challenge for me. Um, but it all came together. They were so wonderful. They gave me their talent. They allowed me to shape and mold them to um, give them choreography where they could uh work together and also they they each had beautiful solos and we got to perform at the beautiful Vizcaya Gardens inside the house and it was an, an amazing experience working with these talented singers and and that in other individual there is um is uh Rosie Gordon Wallace who is from the diaspora arts um diaspora arts vibe and she's just a, an amazing I love her I know her well we go back a long time sorry oh Shakespeare is a white supremacist, um, <laughs> which is, you know, no, Shakespeare is not a white supremacist. It is the ideas that people have about Shakespeare that make Shakespeare appear that way, make his works appear mm. that way. 
every single person here on this stage, actually, regardless of how they look, <laughs> is ethnic. Every single person <laughs> is ethnic. Um, and uh, they have some some ethnicity in their background um, that, um, that, that they brought to the table and performed this play. They had Shakespearean monologues, but it really was about um, control and the director um, trying to um, put his hand in the production and make everything happen. It was a it was a really really fun show. So that Carrie, uh, wherever you are, you're uh, stirring things up, aren't you? And getting people to think and uh, to see things in a different way. And I think we need more. I think more more of you out there. You know, <laughs> Carrie yeah. Brianna Hart. I have been uh, talking to today and Carrie, you were just a pleasure to get to know. Uh, the moment we met that night at the theater at the Gable stage, I was like, oh, I wanna know this person. Yes, and we yes. did get to meet uh, later and uh, I look forward to getting to see you again and knowing more about all the great things that you're doing for this community and for the world. Thank, Thank you, you so much for joining me. Just Thank so you. Much for having me. Thank I you, Carrie. And uh, I want to thank someone else who makes a big difference is our technical director, Mita, Mita Saxena from the Brahma Kumaris Meditation Center. Uh, Mita is always uh, doing things that have to do with change, and uh, but she also has fun at the same time. She's able to create things uh, that do affect the community and affect people's lives and, and be light and easy about it, too. And that's important. So thank you, everybody, for being here. Thank you so much.